What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Friday. Thanks for coming out, watching the show. Uh, let's do something we haven't done in a while. If you've gotten your uh, license, either you got your technician or you upgraded in the last month or so, it doesn't really matter. Throw your name out there. We'll give a big shout out. I want to uh, give a big shout out right on the top of this whole thing to Good Game Ham Radio Bees and Outdoors. Did, I believe, a class he runs. And he got, what is 15 people licensed uh, last week or a couple weeks ago. And also he got um, a teacher license, which is awesome. That's fantastic. So, wow, great, great work on that. Uh, let's make that. There we go. There we go. We're, we're, we're working now. Again, welcome to the Hammerito Crash Course. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I'm glad you could make it. Why is the chat not updating? My chat room is not up. There it goes. Oh, my God. <laughs> there it goes. Hello from Cincinnati. Uh, let's see. Going to take my Jason Parks. I'm going to take my Tech General in a few weeks. Awesome. I Oh, yeah. So, Good Game Ham Radio Bees and Outdoors. It's a class at my school or at school. I teach middle school computer science. Very good. Man, it feels like we just had an earthquake or somebody dropped something really big. Uh, going tomorrow morning, NW Woodsman says. Orlando checking in. Right on, everybody. Well, hey. Welcome to the show. I am Josh again. This is kind of our last uh, time to talk or me talk at you before the the Christmas time. So first of all, happy holidays to everybody. Thanks for coming out on this uh, Friday. How you doing with the weather? It's uh, probably 60 degrees here. So, you know, I've got to bundle up because I'm in California. Mm. We got Quirky QRP in the house. There's Zach, admin, admin extraordinaire. Wyoming ham, I see you in the chat. Thanks so much for coming out, everybody. Today's going to be just a fun, relaxing chat. We're going to do a call-in at the end. Um, I've got some things to talk about. Obviously, we are going to be talking about the Nano VNA, getting some software set up for that. We will be using the desktop software to show what a HT antenna looks like on the software. And there is a reason for this. It's something that I have been wanting to talk about for a very long time. The, well, I have talked about it, but to demonstrate the logistics of why showing an SWR sweep on an HT antenna is often not what you expect. So we will be working through a series of antennas. In fact, why don't I just show you what I got going on there. Uh, here's a whole stack of antennas next to that Nano VNA. By the way, I got that Poxag pager on. If anybody wants to fire off a page, page at me. Go ahead, hit me up with a page. Um, <laughs> right on. Uh, let's see. Happy Friday. Yep, weather is great on the central coast, coast, but might rain this weekend. We were told it's going to rain all week. Very good. That's good. We need it. Anyway, what we try to do here with the Ham Radio Crash Course is kind of create a community um, of inclusive amateur radio operators, call it. Try to create an environment where people feel like they can ask a question and covering all kinds of different areas of amateur radio. I myself can't know everything. I just like to dabble and make a lot of mistakes. And in the process, I kind of walk you along with that. Uh, don't show you all my mistakes, but I show you some of them and show you what I've learned, which is kind of the important thing. And hopefully you take on that mentality as well. If you are interested in getting more involved, Facebook link is in the description along with our Discord. Our Discord is kind of like an IRC chat, if you remember back in the day. Uh, I definitely used IRC all the time. And Discord is very much like that. With Discord, though, we can also do voice and we can do uh, streaming there as well. And after this show, when we wrap up this show, we head on over to the Discord and we do a big voice chat. So you're welcome. You're invited. Check that out. The link is in the description or Loyal will be posting or one of the admins uh, will be posting the link. So make sure to check that out. My dad told me not to talk to strangers, so I'm going to be a ham operator. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. Hello from Vancouver. What's up? Mm. Feliz Navidad from SC Flowers. All right. So got a couple of news stories, some fun stuff to talk about. Some of the stuff. If you, By the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, you should because uh, I post a lot of news stories and things that I'm seeing in the amateur radio world over there. And the link for that is well in the description. So make sure you follow me on over on that site. Okay, good. All right, so the <laughs> cool story, uh, W5KUB's 
ham radio balloon is basically flying over North Korea right now. If it hasn't completed the journey over North Korea, it will be soon. And the reason why I'm showing this image of it going into North Korea is because I believe the transmitters turn off. It kind of geofences itself. It knows it's not supposed to transmit over Pyongyang, which it's pretty much right there. So uh, I, I think that's uh, the pretty awesome. So yeah, he's he's got a balloon with a ham radio on it flying over North Korea somewhere, or maybe it got shut down and the signals were lost. We don't know. <laughs> uh, James Hannibal says the Poxag vig was awesome. I used to mess with all that stuff back in the nineties. Yeah, so it's it's still out there. I'll, I'll be messing around with it some more. I'd like to get some uh, DX cluster information. That's a little bit more U.S. centric. With that said, there's still a lot of good information that you can sign up for on those rubrics. And if you're interested in knowing more, it's the most recent video I posted. So if you like right click on videos on my channel, it'll show you that video. It was uh, kind of a, a little bit of a work to get it going. I'd say it's about similar in getting a, a DMR radio up on the air. That's what I would put. Let's say. Uh, let's see. So December 16th, which I think I was one of the first to put this information out there, we found out what the price is going to be on the ICOM IC705. Uh, 124,800 yen roughly trans uh, translates to somewhere in the 1100 to $1,200 price range. So the uh, 705, where is it? We lost it. There it is. The 705 is a QRP transmitter that has similar capabilities to that of the IC7300, which is my HF radio of choice, or at least has been for a long time, and is the radio that I most often use when I'm on HF. But it's a all-band, all-mode QRP radio, capable of 5 watts output off of internal batteries and 10 watts when it has an external power supply. That internal or external power supply could be a battery. As, as well, it has a GPS receiver, I believe it has Bluetooth, and it has that one USB port. That one USB port is that thing I've been waiting for for a long, long time in a QRP radio, which means one cable connected to a laptop, boom, you're operating on digital modes out in the field very easily, which is exactly what you want to be using when you're out in the field anyway most of the time. So I'm, I'm very much interested in that. I will be making a video on that for sure, so be ready. All right. Oh, today um, I'm drinking a Hopsy uh, Milk Stout. Hopsy, the beer subscription service. I've got a Milk Stout that I'm working on, which is pretty good. Pretty okay. Wouldn't say it's the best Milk Stout I've been, ever had. Not by a long shot, but it's all right. Uh, let's see. Other than power, the 705 does way more than the 70. Yeah, uh, K8MRD radio stuff. Mike, great channel, by the way. Go subscribe to him. Soda activator extraordinaire. He said it does way more than the 7300. He is right because it is all band, meaning all the way up to 70 centimeter and two meters and all mode, including D star. So you're getting a lot of capability out of that radio and it's not very big. It's bigger than the, um, the Elecraft KX2, which is my current soda or poda, not poda, soda slash portable radio, but it is, um, it, it, it's got a lot of features on it. The only downside people seem to be talking about is the fact that it does not have an internal tuner. With that said, if you watch my video on the Soda Beam's uh, three-band linked dipole, you can run that. You don't need a tuner, and it'll be fine. So, Hey! <laughs> Brett Glass Musician says, my HF portable is the one that Josh gave away, the G90. So it made it. Congratulations. And to everybody that won the contest, all the, the shirts went out, including the folks that uh, don't live in the United States. So that was fun to ship you a shirt at well over the price of a shirt. <laughs> mm. Forget Your Life says, I do not want to be on digital modes out in the field. Well, you don't have to. Nobody's making you do that. You can use it as single sideband. Or do whatever you like. That's the great thing about ham radio. Nobody gets to tell you what to do. You enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. All right. Let's see. Okay. So uh, what we're going to be talking about is the Nano VNA running on your desktop. And I'll show you really quick what it looks like. It looks like. That's not it. That's an antenna. It looks like this when it's running. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly, though. Let me go back to the web. Um, I'm pulling this off of GitHub. 
And particularly the software that we are running is called the Nano VNA Saver. It is a exe file. You download it, you put it somewhere you like. Um, I've got it on the desktop right now, but you'd put it in a radio directory, something you've got on your computer. This is on Windows and you run it. That's it. There's no installation or anything like that. Um, I'm running it. I've already scanned it. It's safe. So I will mention that. The link for that is in the description as well. Now, I did the video on the Rig Expert stick that has the software that comes or that you can download and run on a computer. This software is about as easy as that software to get up and running, and it has more capability and more features. So I was very, very impressed with running it. So I'll just get that out right up front. Now, I have to do this. <laughs> I'm going to give a warning. This is my warning screen. Whenever I want you to really pay attention to something, I've got that flashing uh, icon there. So what we're talking about today is HT antennas. So here's my FT2DR by Yesu. HTs, when you transmit with this, you're holding some piece of the system, whether it's the HT or it's a microphone connected to the radio that goes up into your ear, or it's a hand mic or something like that. So you're a part of the package, right? You're part of the ground portion of the radio or part of the radials, whatever you'd like to call it. So you are affecting the antenna from an SWR point of view when you're holding it. Also, the body of the radio, right, is metal. That's where it's connected to the little ground connector or the, the outer portion of the SMA connector that is on the radio. It is part of the antenna system as well. So the hard part about testing these HT antennas is that when you are removing the antenna from the radio, you have to be able to put that chassis, the effect of the radio chassis, the effect of the human being into the loop when looking at the SWR curve. And if you haven't done it in a way that the manufacturer did it when tuning the antenna, then you're going to get weird numbers. Or you're going to be feeding it with, you know, a piece of wire, some kind of metal body, something like that, that is good for one antenna, puts it right smack in the middle of that band or the, where you want that SWR to be. But because the other antenna you're comparing it to wasn't ca ca calibrated or cut with that chassis or that substitute human being in mind, you're going to get an SWR curve that's shifted. And I'm going to demonstrate that. So let me show you really quick what we're working with. Very simple setup. I'm using a mount here that has a hole. The SMA outer screw, if you will, is connected to this metal body. That's it. It's just kind of floating in free space. Okay, so nothing to this right now. Very simple. And I'm going to show you really quickly um, what, what this all does. So this antenna is the Nagoya 771, which traditionally an amazing antenna. Highly recommended. If you have one of these, it's a good antenna. It favors 70 centimeters. What we're looking at, and particularly I would point uh, your eyes here on this lower left line. This is the SWR curve on the current sweep. And I just ran one sweep, and that's you know from, from left to right across the screen. Um, one sweep of the Nano VNA. And it's showing a 4 to 3.57 SWR. Well, that's not very good at all. Let's do a quick uh, sweep again. And, and really quickly, I'll show you the sweep. Click this little button right there. And the little bar will take off. It'll do a sweep again. And so you got this dip. It's like, oh, okay, hey, that's not a bad dip. What's the SWR there? Uh, let's see. It looks like, where'd it go? I lost it. Uh, well, I can read it out that way. It's a little above three to one. So you think, wow, that's really bad, really bad. Let me take a piece of wire, okay? So I have a 19 inch piece of wire that um, we've got here. 19 inch piece of wire. I've got an alligator clip attached to it. And I'm just gonna clip it onto this little piece of metal. And we're gonna rescan. There we go. Let's do that sweep again. Okay, so that brought it down. Now it's 3.14 to 1. Now I'm going to put my hand on it. 
and let's see what it does. Well, that keeps dropping it down. Now it's three. It should have dropped it down. It should have brought that to the center of the screen, but whatever. Um, so just by my human being part of my body, my hand, touching the piece, the plate of metal that is connected to the connector for the antenna, I've already affected the SWR curve of the antenna where it's resonant. So something to keep in mind, whatever rig you build up to look at these antennas, you're going to get an effect, an effect like that. So keep that in mind. Let's look at the chat really quick. On these. Yeah, the um, somebody was commenting that the people who have done the work on these should get together and do a spectrum analyzer with TG. I'd uh, pay $200 for that. So yeah, a lot of these rigs are custom rigs. They're very expensive that the manufacturers are putting together and you know, that's not something you're necessarily going to recreate, nor are those specs like really um, openly given out. So you don't really know how to calibrate an, a testing rig to be able to run an SWR check. So you say F three to one SWR and an HT is not great. It can probably handle it just fine, but we're not actually recreating the SWR accurately because and let me, let me show you this as a, as a follow on. So let's just say I take that 19 inch um, wire and I connect the other leg of it. It's an alligator clip. So now you just have like a loop kind of hanging off the side here. What happens when I do that? I did it again. There we go. Let's sweep that guy. Well, that kicked it way up. Now it's five to one again. So little things like that are going to affect everything you do when you're testing an antenna out. So you kind of have to keep that in mind as you're going about doing this kind of stuff because it's going to affect the entire antenna system which is why i try not to do uh, antenna tests like this because it, it kind of gives you funky numbers depending on what radio you're on or how you have it set up so keep that in mind that's why when i do when i did the abri antenna video i just had a receiving station which was an sdr and i just went away from it and transmitted to it because the signal to noise ratio doesn't lie. If you have an output, a received power coming into that SDR, and you take that across all the antennas using the same transmitting radio, well, there you go. So yeah, if you're watching this so far and you're enjoying it, give me a thumbs up. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. And if you're watching me for the first time, maybe also consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. Uh, here's a comment from K6ARK. Some manufacturers even tune the stock rubber duck for the specific radio they put them on and when they sell them. Good point. Of course they do. Why would they not? And in fact, I have a Baofeng uh, rubber ducky. I'm going to throw that on next. And one would assume that that thing is probably tuned. Well, one would like to assume that it's tuned relatively okay for a Baofeng. And what's that SWR going to look like? So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, so 3 to 1 SWR on the 771, we know it's a good antenna. So does 3 to 1 SWR mean that, oh, we were all wrong? It's not a performing antenna? No, it just means that we're not recreating the test bed in the best way possible. But one could say, well, we know what 3 to 1 is. Let's go ahead and compare all of them and check. But if we get one that's like super low, that just means it was, it was configured that way, right? It was configured to be low when I have a 19-inch wire on it. Chris C says, Prol Gang. <laughs> Super chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I do. Someone send me a, a chamber in which I can put all my uh, stuff in and, and get you know <laughs> get perfect perfect testing. Okay, so let's uh, let's switch over to the overhead really quick, and um, we're gonna jump back and forth a little bit. All right. Let me turn on. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do automatic sweep while I'm here. Let's say you're, you're following along with me and you got your Nano VNA at home. You start it up and you see this screen. Uh, what you want to do is, is likely if you had your Nano VNA connected, this lower left-hand corner serial port is going to be populated. But if it's not, let's say you plugged in Nano VNA after you started the software, you hit the rescan button and it'll likely pop up what it thinks it is. If you don't know, bring up the device manager on your computer and go to the COM ports and look for the, the whatever the connection is to the Nano VNA. And then you're going to click Connect. Obviously, it says Disconnect right now, but you click Connect, and it will connect. Did Matt say something? Boop, 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 boop. 
or sorry, not Matt, Mike. What would more than one counterpoise do? Well, we can test that too. Let me go back to the uh, since we have the we have a kind of a static um, thing going on here. So we've got one connected right here. We will we will gingerly pull that over to the side, and I have another uh, patch cable that is 19 inches. Let me make sure I got the right one. Nitro 3307, can you test the 42-inch Abris tactical antenna? Yes, I will. I will, I will, I will. I promise. We won't finish this. So I'm going to clip another uh, radial call it um, to this because that's kind of what I'm doing. I've kind of turned this into um, a quarter-way vertical. So now I've got two radials connected. Uh, let's do a sweep. Boop, boop, boop. Holy smokes. Let's look at that. The, the suspense is probably killing you. Are you ready? What? <laughs> Good call, Mike. You stole my thunder a little bit, but I was getting to that. <laughs> so there you go. Throw a couple radials on there. All of a sudden, whoa, 1.3 to 1. Okay. And the dip here, the dip of this antenna is towards the front of the band. And since we have this antenna on, we know that this is a decent 40 meter, uh, 70 centimeter antenna. So let's flip that over. Let's say you wanted to do that on your Nano VNA software. Go to Sweep Settings. On this screen, you got a band select. Scroll to the bottom here, 70 centimeters. You don't want any kind of limits, and you set the band sweep, close the window, and then hit sweep again. All right. So 1.86 all the way down to a little bit like one, call it 1.5. So very good. Um, good stuff, right? You add a couple of radials on there. Hey, we've got a not bad testing rig now. Again, you got to it's always with an asterisk though because this is what looks good on this antenna. Why don't we go to that long boy? We'll do that right now. We'll switch over to that uh 42 inch abri antenna. Let's do it. Okay. Let me pull the mic along with me too. All right. There it is. We've also got the signal stick. We'll pull that out too, but again, this is all just kind of based off of how good your setup is for the antenna in how it was calibrated. So long boy is deployed. Let's get that uh, 771 off of there. Great antenna though. I, I do I do recommend the 771. If you, if you do have that, uh, particularly if you're a 70 centimeter person, you're gonna have a good time with that antenna. Oh boy. Of course, realizing now, will the long boy, oh God, the long boy too long as as expected. Don't move. Oh man. My cork that I was using to hold these antenna in place is, is got nothing against the long boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. <laughs> oh man. No, this is not good. Let's just balance you for a second here. Come on. There we go. <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> don't move. Okay, here we go. Seriously, don't move. All right, long boy connected. We'll go uh, 70 centimeters since we're here. Oh, my God! <laughs> 1.29 SWR. Okay, well, I mean, am I just, you know, I've got a, a decent setup for it? Maybe, you know, but not bad. Let's throw it on two meters. Same kind of deal. Flip this guy over. I'm always impressed when I, it's just a stupid antenna. I can't. <laughs> it always makes me laugh. Uh, yo, yo. So, you know, not great, uh, 1.86 to above 2. But also notice that the line is kind of going up, so that means it's actually, like, lower. Um, the great thing about this antenna analyzer, or this VNA, is we can just widen this a bit. So let's embiggen that right now. So I'm going to go to Start Megahertz. I'm going to open that up to 100, and I'm going to put the stop. Yeah, we'll put the stop at 146. Let's go. Oh, there it is. So yeah, so 100 megahertz, it's way out of whack, 20 SWR, but then you get to about 3 to 1, right, oh wait, 1.3 to 
to hit. Oh, that's why. One, one thirty-seven. What's that? One thirty-seven megahertz is at its lowest. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Sean, you know who? Anyone else looking at the nano tape? Uh, at the nano on the table as he sets up. Oh, the nano? The nano? What nano? I have a nano on the table? Anyway. Oh, I realized I forgot something too. I'm going to I'm gonna kick myself if I don't do this. I got to do this right now. I, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we got to do this. Otherwise, I'm going to forget and I, and I will really feel bad. So I got a QSL card from Jason, uh, Ham Radio 2.0. We'll call this intermission for the chat. Thanks for sticking along. I got a QSL card of Jason and Frank. Look at that. Pretty cool. Thank you, Jason. And this, he's he's absolutely killing it on FT8. He's everywhere right now. So got that from him. Um, also, John over at uh, Part 97 uh, with the shirts, he also sent stickers. And I totally forgot to mention that. So he totally killed it in the package i didn't recognize the stack of envelopes he sent and he sent me a whole bunch of these stickers so he get, sent me a couple of these so we'll make sure to give some of these away too when we when we do the sticker or the shirt giveaway i i seem to be collecting shirts to give away so go play radio so that's definitely going on my car and then i'll give away the other three uh ke zero whiz from minnesota that was on FT8 as well. And then got this cool card. Look at that. K6 TNT. Sent me a Christmas card with the uh, with the thumbnail from the Soda Hike. Absolutely awesome. So thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm glad I did that. Sorry. Thanks for letting me. Uh, thanks for sticking with me while I did that. Did we get any pages? Did we get any pages while we did this? Oh. W one P I D. I saw your Poxag video. So the <laughs> page is up and running. Okay, so let's swap out to the signal stick. Now that we got this amazing setup. Oh yeah, I'm. <laughs> so I'll be honest. I I send QSL cards. I reply though. I I don't. Uh, I guess I don't start the transaction. I guess you could say. Let's wrap up the long boy here. This thing is so ridiculous. God. Okay. Signal stick. Long. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Now, wait, where did it go? Uh oh, now we're in trouble. Oh, there it is. So we are messing with the um, the calibration a little bit by doing this. I will say that right up front. So don't give me a hard time about that. But because um, by adding this barrel connector here, you're somewhat messing with the the calibration of the lead. He will likely just sit, but let's add the cork. Yeah, very good. And that looks a little like that. And it's all set up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Let's see what what did Santa send me? Congratulations, you win. What did I win? Click here to claim your prize. <laughs> That's working. All right. Oh, I did it again. All right, I'm moving you. Get out of here. All right, so let's sweep it again like we did last summer. Uh, what happened? Let's go back to two meters. Let's go to 70 centimeters set. Sweepy sweep. Uh. Oh, buddy, what happened there? Got a five to one SWR. 70 centimeters just for the sake of uh of doing this let's swip over swip uh, switch over to two meters let's scan again 
That's a, uh, a little bit better. Two, two, seven, one. So let's take off one of the radials and scan it again. Uh, it went up. Hmm. So it's entirely possible, and and we'll 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 talk about this. Uh, we'll do it on the overhead though. So yeah, it actually got worse putting that back on. So let's talk about that too. So it is likely. Let's see. Uh, where are you at? It's looking in the chat there. So let me switch back to the overhead. So it's likely that with the uh, Brie antennas, right, as we talked about on the review, You've got this coil of wire here where my hand is. It's actually a coil underneath here. This this whole thing comes out. So if you ever like damage in a Brie, you can just technically you could get another one of these or you could just use one on your radio and swap out the blade on the top. I don't think anybody would do that, but the the outer shielding of the antenna actually connects to a coil of wire that's inside here. And I'm betting that that's also the case on the 771 that there's some bit of coil that's inside here so that's going to affect what you see on the swr but when you're on the signal stick you don't have the coils you're likely not still in a bad case with the swr because once it's connected to your radio and then your body's up against it whatever you're going to get different numbers so all right let's swap it out What's next? How about the Baofeng stock antenna? Or this is the one from the uh, BFF8HP. Let's rescan it. Three point five seven down to two seven one on two meters. And we'll change that over to 70 centimeters. Uh, Jeff asks, is there, a, is there actually a coil or is there just a big old 50 ohm resistor? So the pictures that I've seen online and they're on Amazon, it is actually a coil. So yeah, you're, you're going to get it. It is a coil of wire. Um, I half, I'm half curious to actually cut one open since again, you can just use them for, you, you can use them in between your other antennas. So I wouldn't have a problem just cutting one open and seeing. So what do we get there? 70 centimeters, 4.43 to one on 70 centimeters. So not very good for the UV or the BFF8 HP. So similar, let's take the Nagoya 717, throw that on there. This is always a fan of, I always like this one. I'm a fan of this antenna because it's just very whippy, if that's a thing. Pretty similar. Let's take off one of the, the radials. Got a little bit better, 357. Okay, let's try it on two meters. Two point four three, or sorry, two point two, and then up to almost three. So you get the idea. Um, you're you're gonna be somewhere in the ballpark, but the fudge factor of having it connected to a radio and then up against your head is going to change it a little bit. Uh, Done deal asks, does the nano VNA measure distance to fault? Don't know. Uh, that's probably a question uh, over the top of my head. But yeah, so Jeff actually mentions, according to that Smith chart, it's not 50 ohms at all. 
correct. And in fact, if we, the best impedance is 37.5 ohms. Not good. So what does that all mean? Well, um, keep in mind too, and I'm going to piss some people off here, but um, keep in mind too, none of these antennas are fed by coax. Uh, you, you can, I guess, but not really fed by coax. Uh, you're connected directly to the radio, so you are getting the power out. You're not getting a lot of loss that way with the, um, the ohm mismatch. Uh, let's, oh, somebody asked about the firmware I'm running, the glitches that you see, which is probably this guy, this lower, this lower hit. Um, I am running, I'm not sure which I'm running, but I did get the one that has the upgraded firmware. Mm. Yeah, audio dropped because I had the mic away. Sorry about that. I'm jumping back and forth. I apologize. Uh, Nitro 3307 asks, what is the best position for an antenna on a car or truck? Right on the top, the highest point on the top. So if you're on a truck, right over the top of the cab. If you're in a car, right in the middle of the roof. That's the best place. Now, in some total, it's still good if you've got it on the trunk or you've got it on a door lip, but the best place is in the middle. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Tully Man 82 asks, which one did you buy off Amazon? Some people were saying that when they ordered, la and we're talking about the Nano VNA, lacks the shielding included in the original design and is thus subject to spurious noise. I am using, uh, or I bought the one that is linked in the description on the Amazon store. Uh, it was also the one I mentioned on the holiday uh, gift ideas, or um, what was it? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, recommendations for hams. Jay Ceilings asks, what's the best antenna for $500 if I give you $500? $500 antenna. You'd have to tell me what it's for. If it's for HF, that's tough actually um i'd have to think about that done deal says that's exactly what he wanted he uses an anritsu for work and he was hoping it would do the same thing i'm getting one um so done deal this is not an anritsu <laughs> it is not it is a cheap chinese kind of highly portable mobile vna and uh, you're gonna get what you pay for it. it's about 50 bucks Less if you buy it through China, more if you buy it on Amazon. <laughs> good Game Ham Radio has a good, uh, good idea. He said, you can buy a lot of speaker wire for 500 Lots of dipoles. That's true. Make a rover set up. For... <laughs> All right. So what else do we want to test? Let's, let's go back to the screen, and then I'll open up uh, the phone lines. So let's do, let's do a couple more here. Logic 44. Thank you for the support, buddy. Appreciate it. Okay, so I've already done the 771. I have two of these. Um, the 701 is good. The expert antenna, I like this. I've got that was the Baofeng stock antenna. I, I think we can put the 18 inch of Brie on it, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be um, the same. Yeah, for everybody that's commenting for $500, what kind of HF antenna to get, you can't really go wrong with the DX Commander. Plus, you're, sort of, you're supporting a, a, a really good YouTuber as well. So I don't have one yet, and that's likely because I can't really deploy radials. It's my understanding that that antenna works best with radials, but I'm interested. I'm thinking about how I could do one. There we go. All right, we got the Abri. I figured it out. 18-inch Abri, which I think is kind of like the sweet spot for this antenna. I, I've changed my mind. I initially thought that the 24 inch was kind of the sweet spot, but I don't know. Um, okay, so interesting. 3.57 to 1. Oh, you should see that, shouldn't you? 3.57 to 1 on uh, 2 meters. Let's flip that over. Flip it and reverse it.
little bit worse on 70 centimeters. So basically the same design of an antenna as the 42 inch version, but you put more metal up there and all of a sudden, there you go. Not to say that's the reason, but. Does the rig expert have a computer app like the Nano VNA does? It does. Oh, the audio went down again. Sorry about that. That's my fault. Apologize. Um, yes, rig expert has software just like the nano VNA. So you can absolutely do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good game ham radio. I appreciate it. All right, let's do a couple more. Actually, I will, um, I got to be sitting in front of the computer though, if I'm going to open up the chat or the call. So let's do a couple more really quick and then we'll, we'll open it up for questions. If you guys have them and maybe we can try some little funsy stuff if you want to call in since we got the VNA going. All right, what's next? Uh, let's go with that expert antenna. This was uh, reviewed pretty well back in the day, the expert antenna, antenna when I did the first uh, review. The expert is, um, I don't know, I just like the look of it. This is usually always on one of my HTs. Excuse me. Three point five seven to one on tw uh, seventy centimeters. Excuse me, seventy centimeters and two meters. What do we get? Five. Ooh, that's not good at all. Again, kind of relative though, depending on once you put a big hunk of metal in the loop, like an HT. Right, so I keep wanting to re repeat this. When you're testing with some kind of coax feed line and you're not giving it the human simul simulacra, uh, some kind of fake human in the loop or some kind of hunk of metal, it's kind of tough to be able to give you an adequate reading. Hey, the enforcer asks, hey Josh, does this work with Christmas lights? Yes, the Nano VNA goes all the way down to HF. So yes, and in fact, I'll throw an HF antenna on it. Uh, but let, let's go ahead and bring up the calls. Um, let me see if I can, can I, I guess I can Santa hat. No, I can't. We're done with that. Holiday spirit is gone. All right, so if you want to call in, go ahead and call in now. Where did it go? There it is. So yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to call in. I'll be monitoring the, uh, the phone lines. If you have a question, your calls now. All right, let's grab a, what's next? Let's do the 701 last and then we'll, we'll do something else. Hey, we got a color. All right. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> hey, he's back. Ryan, how's it going, Ryan? You there? You likely have to mute your uh, audio. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Um, just calling in, thought I'd say hi. Well, thank you uh, very much for calling in. Yep. I uh, just got out of school today, so I'm off for two weeks, so that's nice. Me too. So I'll be, uh, <laughs> I'll be uh, playing around with HF. Very good. Quite a very bit good. more. Yep. Oh, I have a lot more time. Uh, started prototyping for a little field strength meter. I'm building inside of a digital multimeter. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's uh, next on my list. I need a, a better field strength meter. Yeah, I don't have the uh, one three, or the one N three eight or three four diodes or whatever it is, the sensitive ones. Those are hopefully coming in soon. So I was just prototyping with some uh, silicone diodes that I had mm -hmm. that uh, seemed to do the job. You know, I 
stood next to it with my Baofeng, and uh, the number went up when I keyed down and talked. <laughs> right on. So I think that's a sign that it works. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, that's... Experimentation is the way to go. So, yeah, absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's pretty exciting. Any questions or anything? Uh, not really. I mean... I don't know. Would it be worth it for me to get one of these nano VNAs? I don't think I'd really have a use for it, so are you, I'm guessing probably not yet. Are you, are you playing on HF at all? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not really building antennas for HF is the thing, so. Yeah, gotcha. Um, yeah, so it, it works up to 70 centimeters, so if you're building those antennas, it could be helpful if you don't have another way to model antennas. For fifty bucks or so, it's it's not a bad deal at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. If I start building more antennas, I'll probably pick one up at some point. But at the moment, I probably don't need it. So. Okay. Right on. All right. Well, uh, thanks yeah. for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Uh, have a good rest of your night. I'll probably see you in the after chat in the uh, right. three. Oh, thank you very much for calling in, Ryan. I'll talk to you in the after chat. See ya. So I need to mention, since I almost forgot, but we, we got a reminder chat. Uh, we're going we're gonna to give away, I think, a nano VNA. Uh, so WI5FWJ is donating, donating a nano VNA. The only way to get involved in that is uh, we do all the giveaways on Discord. Somebody's paging me. Hold on, let's check. Well, I didn't realize it's going to keep beeping until... Ethan says, have you done a head-to-head -head between the Nano VNA and your rig expert? A little bit. I did a little bit on the, um, the video I did on the Nano VNA. And yeah, they're kind of relative, to be honest. Um, so, some things are going to be better with the... The nano VN. Well, some most things are going to be better with the rig expert. I would I would believe that that's going to be a more accurate um, analyzer. But yeah. So yeah, if you're interested in possibly winning a nano VNA, go join the Discord below. I'll be posting a giveaway after the live stream while we're doing, or pretty pretty much after we do the uh, live stream, we're doing the after chat. So make sure to check that out. Hey Evan, thank you for the support. Two two three. I know what that's for. I know what that's all about. Right on. All right. So what else we got? To... There it is. Why is it all the way up there? Bring that down a bit. Happy little corner right there. Let's do that. All right. <laughs> Tully Man says, how did you get a pager to work? I still got three of mine. That's awesome. Well, go look at my last video on uh, setting up Poxag. It is a ham radio pager. So, yes, ham... I, I, gotta, I actually got to look that way. The camera's flipped over here, but let's go see what it says. I don't know how long I can do this for because that's uh, I didn't know it'd beep for that long. W four D H W. Hey Josh, oh come back. Thanks for the videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, Poxag pager running on seventy centimeters into my or actually it's running off of signals that are sent from my Pi Star. So yeah, if you want to know more about that, definitely go check out the video that I posted this week. Uh, not a not a completely simple setup at all, but it's fun if you're a super nerd like I am, which I no joke. Um, I I agree, I'm a super nerd. Oh, Collins is not there, is it? There we go. All right. Uh, let's do. Oh, let's throw it on the HF really quick, and I'll show you what that's like to run the software uh, with the Nano VNA. Let me grab a patch cable. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah, I want to try to maintain this as much as possible. We may need to recalibrate, but um, we'll try it first with this, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Since I'm changing the coax, the, the feed lines, I'm adding a big, bulky uh, coax line, like this guy here. Come on, there we go. And what are we on? We're on 40. Okay. So this is going to look funky because it's a funky antenna. We're going to go up to We're going to go up to 40 meters. Oh, there was a super chat. Hold on. Got general last week. Thanks for the videos KJ7LIG. Hey, right on. Congratulations. Very good. So we're going to select 40 meters. We're going to set it. And we're going to sweep it. And there's the dip uh, is at 7.0268. It says the lowest point. Realistically, it's it's more like, oh, you can't see, <laughs> you can't see that, can you? Sorry about that. There we go. Um, you're we're down here, uh, but realistically, it's it's 7.100 is is all tuning that I've noticed. So let's switch the antenna to 20 or the, the hex beam, and we'll rerun this. And so somebody asks, good antenna for 40 meters FT8, a dipole, as high as you can get it up off the ground. That would be the recommendation. Let's go to 20 meters, set it, sweep it, And there we go. We got kind of this weird dippy bit. And right around 14.118, it dips. And towards the end of the band, it's still below 3 to 1. So not bad. And let's see. Let's do the whole, the whole shebang. Oop, oop. This should do it. Let's see. No, that didn't do it. My bad. Uh, let's take it down. So the lowest this is gonna this antenna that it's on is 14. So I'll I'll just set this for 14 megahertz. Come on, there we go. 14, and we'll go up to 60. Um, a trick that um, is off of the. I posted a how-to to set up the Nano VNA saver. This is the application I'm running. Although you don't need to, it's a really simple application. I poked around and figured most of it out. If you do a uh, scientific explanation, uh, scientific, uh, denoting E3, so 14.E3 and 60E3, not dot, just E3, and sweep it. Let's see if that works. That didn't work. Is wrong with you um, set band sweep oh, let's change this to one segment we're gonna go to 14 point zero zero e3 and 60 point zero 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 E3. I'm gonna have to restart it. Yeah, because you can't, how do I make that set? Seems like it didn't like that. There we go, do it again. No, okay, I'm gonna restart it, hold on. Boop, 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 show you what that looks like. There's the desktop shortcut. It runs a terminal window or DOS window. Got to wait a second. Hey, randomness, go ahead. Thanks for calling in. Oh, it's all hung up now. 
Now I'm going to have to kill it. Are you there, randomness? Yes. Uh, What's muted, up? I think. How's it going? What's up? Uh, I'm here. I think I'm muted, though. Go ahead. I can hear you. Randomness. There it is. Hello? Yeah. What's up? Okay, cool. Uh, I'm trying to contact the ISS tomorrow if they're actually on voice. Uh, so do you think my two-meter Yagi will do the job? Because from what I've read, they only use two meters for voice. Uh, Wait, say this again. You're trying to contact what? The International Space Station. Is this a part I've of... I've got a pass uh... tomorrow that's really good. Yeah, but are, are you um, are you a part of some kind of like group like Ares or or what's the uh, what is the you're just gonna try and talk to them? Basically, yeah. They've got oh, okay. voice frequency that's publicly available on the internet. Yeah, so they don't generally take calls, just random calls. All right. Uh, so, I did not know that. yeah, they they really only take calls uh, through the Aris A R I S S school program, and that's where they talk to uh, kids in school. So you can, yeah. however, receive their um, SSTV transmissions, slow scan television transmissions. But um, yeah, generally these yeah. days they don't. Somebody in the chat mentioned that Tom Medlin has had success talking to astronauts without an appointment. Yeah, but that was years ago when his uh back when they did that. They don't do that so much anymore. You may get lucky, try it. Um they yeah, also my have goal an, just to get lucky. Yeah, they also have an APRS uh digipeter. So you can work APRS. No, I know, I'm just letting you know. Um so if that becomes something in the future. However, if you're thinking about it, to, to try and work satellites, try and uh, get a pass for SO50. SO50 is going to be a, a good place to, to start. Or AO91 would be another one. Yeah, I uh, I plan on doing that at some point. I just wanted to see if I would get lucky. I just oh, okay. wanted to make sure that I would actually get out there. That's a tape measure 2-meter Yagi I built. Okay. All right, then. So... Very good. Uh, did you have uh, any questions other than that? Um, have you gotten sick recently? Because I've had the flu and it's been terrible. <laughs> no, no, I've been lucky. Which normally I'm I'm the first one to get sick because my kids are germ factories. Oh dear. Yeah, they uh, they forgot to cover a strain here in the vaccine, so a lot of people are getting it. Well, that's not good. And this one. It's, uh, they didn't expect swine flu to come back, but it did. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, now I'm having it's... trouble setting this up. So, right, right. on. Thanks. Okay, I'll let you go then. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. No problem. See ya. Okay, so now I'm, I'm having trouble because I'm trying to set a big, wide path on this thing. And every time I set the start and stop uh, after setting the span... It doesn't like my span, so I likely have something wrong. So we're gonna we're gonna try and debug this live. I don't think I need to mess with any of this. Uh, sweep settings. Oop, come back. There it is. Number of measurements to average. Number to discard. Sweep span. So it's got a short sweep span. Hmm. So you can set it easily enough to a band, but we want to see the whole thing. This is kind of what happens. Um, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't. You should be able to make it wide enough where it's just. Oh, e oh, there we go. I think that was it. So 
span should be 1,000E6. Let's see if that did it. 14. No, it still doesn't like it. So let's do 30. And we'll go to 1,000E6. Sweep it. No, I gotta do this one E3. E3. Doesn't like it. I'm doing something wrong, but to start out, <laughs> you can easily just change it on the frequency uh, using that. But once you select it, I have a hard time going in and changing it back because you can't, if you change the span, it'll reset uh, if you go in here. So if I wanted to start it at 14, uh, so if I do 14, E3, and 30, E3. There we go. That might work. There we go. Okay, I got it. I didn't have enough zeros. <laughs> so there you go. So the dip, again, so here's a 28.24, uh, 28.204 megahertz. And this is 22. Oh, that's interesting. 22, that's not accurate. And then 40 or 20s right here at around 14. So there you go. I screwed up. <laughs> oh, rune. Okay, so it's even easier. So just type in 14M and 60M and tab it out. Yeah, that, that did it. Okay, I was making it too complicated. Just do M for megahertz. So there you go. There's the there's the whole hex beam plotted out. Uh, so you got a couple of low points here at 20. You got another one at 22, another one at 28, and then another one at 46. That's all wrong. That one needs to be sorted out. That's my six meters. Sorry, no six meters. And then 50.34. So we've got some funkiness here that I need to sort out. Uh, but if you go right in the middle here of the Smith chart, where is the 50 ohm. 50 ohm should be right here. Funkiness. Haha! <laughs> Good game, Ham Radio Bees and Outdoors says shameless plug to try and push my push my subs over 2K. Yeah, go check him out. Go uh go hit him up with the subs there. He's got a lot going on. He's got ham radio bees and outdoors. Hopefully those are all out hopefully the bees and the ham radio are all outdoors at the same time. So that would be cool. <laughs> go check him out. All right. So uh, that's going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and head over to the Discord now. And thanks, everybody, for coming out. Let's do the old... Uh... Ooh, excuse me. So, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll leave this set up. Meet me over on the Discord side, and we can talk about it. But before I go, I have a big shout-out to all my friends over on the Patreon. Thank you for supporting the channel and we're gonna have patron picks is going to be two weeks from now and the vote is already up so if you haven't seen that patrons to pick what the topic will be there seems to be a dead heat between a couple of uh, pretty good uh, video ideas I'm very excited and one of them we're gonna bring in an expert guest to talk about the particular topic so anyway big thank you to Carrie Blackwell Jason Brown Jason Siebert David Dancero Danny Miller Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Will Ladd, Evan Hartman, Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, 86DM Dennis, The Wyoming Ham, who is out there in the chat. Hope he's still checking it out. Randall Hensley, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, KG7ITX, Ur Dragette Shavitz. Hopefully I said that right. 
<laughs> I, I hope I did. Let me know or if I got it right or closer. Chad, Rob Zares, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K8BCR, Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve Barker, Mark Fields, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadau, Stephen Hunt, Carnold Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Hearley, Harald Carpenter, and the Brew Crew, although my brew ran out. So I'll refill it before the after chat. Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, Stephen Carduz, Brian Fairbanks, Richard Smith, Hercules KC1LZR, Mike Zaret, John Flowers, Tom Wright, Tan Hat in the house, Bill McCarty, Good Game Bees, and Ham Radio, uh, Jer <laughs> David Geralt, Simon Beards, and uh, Nicholas Dubé. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Hope I did right. Okay, guys, heading on over to Discord. The links for all that in the, is in the description, although I'm sure there have been links posted by the admins. Thanks so much for your thumbs up and your subscriptions. I really do appreciate it. I try and go live every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you click the little bell, you'll be notified, and it would be awesome if you did that. Have a happy holidays. I don't know if I will stream before uh, the Christmas season but or the Christmas time. We will be back next Friday. Hopefully something fun that I'm working on that I will share with you all. Okay, take it easy. 70